Hey booktube, of course I bought more books and I need to tell you all about them. I got my ticket for the long way round. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks, except for the multitude of times in February when I have been talking about all the books I've bought in print. And I bought a bunch. I have been away from home and so I took advantage of a sale at uh, a bookstore I really like called Books A Million. And then I went to Goodwill and to my closeout store, Ollie's. And finally, my kids gave me some books they wanted to get rid of. And some of them, I thought, ooh, I want to keep that. So those were free. So I'm going to start off with the cheap ones from uh, Books A Million. And I had already gotten The Edge of Never by J.A. Redmersky. And so I picked up The Edge of Always, which is the sequel. I have to say that as the, this duology went, I wasn't as fond as the, of this one as I was of the first one, but it's still a good story. And so I ended up just picking it up. So now I have the duology. Then I saw The Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman. You know, I'm getting to be such a huge Alice Hoffman fan, and I have this on audio, and I really want to listen to it. So when I saw it in print for cheap, it was $5, and then... Actually, I, th I got three books, and I spent about $12, so they were about $4 each, which is a pretty good deal. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, because I love Alice Hoffman. I do love Alice Hoffman. And then I got The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. I love this book. This is one of my favorite books of last year, and of course I wanted to own it. So when I saw it for cheap, I grabbed it. Then I hit Ollie's, which is my closeout store. Always has a good selection of books. And because I go as often as I do, I don't always find great stuff. But I found this. This is The Fire Sermon by Francesca Haig. And I don't know really very much about this book other than it is a dystopian and it involves twins. And this says, before the blast, they'd say there had been sermons about fire, about the end of the world. The fire itself gave the last sermon, and after that, there were no more. So um, she's a poet, and this, well, I guess this says post-apocalyptic. Um, so it's a trilogy. This is the first book in the trilogy. It looks really cool. It's got a really cool cover and it was cheap. I have it on audio so I thought it looked really interesting. I have heard um, Janie from Bookworms Buddy talk about it a little bit and she said it was pretty good. So we'll see. Yeah, I'll probably listen to it and then I'll be glad that I own it. Then on to Goodwill I went, and the first thing I saw was The Interestings by Meg Wolitzer. This is one of the favorite books of last year um, of my good friend Helene at Helene the Book Owl. This is uh, literary fiction, and it's about a group of friends and kind of just a coming-of-age story, kind of their story throughout their lives. And she really, really liked it. And so I don't know if it's available on audio. I'm sure it is. And I'll probably pick it up that way, depending on the narrator. But yeah, I have it in print. And man, these covers, aren't these gorgeous covers? I mean, really, it's really pretty. I had given away my copy of Landline. So when I saw this one at Goodwill for about two bucks, actually, I think it was cheaper than that. I think it was a buck and a half. Um, I grabbed it, even though it's got a little bit of a stain on the back. That's okay. You know, it's more about having it on the shelf than it is about the actual book. And you look at the spine all the time anyway, and it's in good shape. So um, this wasn't my favorite of hers, but I'm glad I own it because I want to own all of her books. So, yeah, it was cheap, and I picked it up. Another Alice Hoffman book, The Blue Diary, or just Blue Diary. Uh, you know, anytime I see Alice Hoffman, I'm grabbing her books, and there seem to be a lot of them at secondhand stores. So, uh, yeah, this one's got a really pretty cover with that key. Don't know what it's about. It seems like I flipped through the synopsis on the on the um, and with the flap, but I don't, I can't remember. I just know it's Alice Hoffman. Anytime you're at Goodwill, you always see a ton of Nora Roberts because she's really popular, and I already had these two books in the. In Boonesbury trilogy, I had books one and two, and I so I, you know what I did? I had taken pictures of all of my shelves, and I pulled it up on my phone to see which ones I had. I knew I had a couple, but I couldn't remember which ones I had in the trilogy. Well, I had one and two, and so I saw this one, which is book three, and I grabbed it. Now, I've read books two and three, but I haven't read book one. And I think I actually will because I 
like the narrator. It's McLeod Andrews, and he is phenomenal. And so because of that, I'll probably pick up book one, even though this wasn't my favorite um, story line, I, you know, trilogy. I It was kind of my first introduction to Nora Roberts, and she's very prolific. And, you know, of course, she's written tons and tons and tons of books. So I thought, well, you know, I wanted to try her out. She's very mainstream, and I liked it well enough. It was good. I don't think she's Jill Shalvis. You can't really beat Jill Shalvis. These weren't nearly as funny or as quick, but I still liked them. So I think I will pick up the first book and read that. Then I picked up a couple of God books. The first was Mere Christianity, and this is by C.S. Lewis, and I just, this is a really nice copy of it. It has the French flaps and the deckled edges, and it's published by Harper One, uh, which is an imprint of Harper Collins. So it was just a nicer copy than what I had. This is a really hard, dense book to get through, but it's really good. It's just very rich. And it takes a lot of brain power to think about what he's talking about because it's very philosophical. But it is basically Lewis's treatise on why Christianity works and is true and should be the preferred belief system of everyone. So anyway, yeah, that's his. And then, this is kind of funny. I was uh, in a bookstore looking for something completely different, and I was on a time schedule, and I needed to get out of there, and they had this massive wall of books. So, man, I was clipping through it, grabbed three or four things, and I saw this. This is called So You Don't Want to Go to Church Anymore, and it's by Wayne Jacobson and Dave Coleman, and the tagline is An Unexpected Journey. Well, I saw it, and... I picked it up because I wanted to read it and then maybe pass it along to my girls. And the reason for that is that I hate going to church. I really do. I, I don't like the American church the way it's done. I think it's, it's so much like school and it's much less interactive. I would rather have it be much more interactive, which you can get in a small group setting, but you can't really get in church worship, and I just wish you could. So um, my girls, they tend to be hit and miss with going to church, and that's very common with preacher's kids, PKs as we call them, because our family has been very blessed by the church and also very hurt by the church. We've had really good experiences and then some not so good experiences, and so they carry that. And it tends to be the kind of thing where they hold back and they think, well, I don't want to go to church because you can't trust those people and what if they hurt you? And, you know, that kind of tends to hang in the back, even though their relationship with God is good. So anyway, I just thought it looked like an interesting book. So I'm standing there in Goodwill ready to pay for it. And this man looks down, he's in line behind me and he goes, so why don't you want to go to church anymore? <laughs> I thought, how do you answer a question like that? To someone who's standing behind you in line at a, you know, a retail store. Oh, I didn't know what to say. So I said, no, uh, I just thought it looked interesting. And, you know, I kind of brushed it off and got out of there as quickly as I could. Not that, I mean, it's anything to be embarrassed about. It's just a very direct question. And I just didn't quite know how to answer it without taking another hour to stand there and just explain it to him anyway. So should be interesting. Actually, I really, um, I'm really looking forward to reading this because I think it's got some good things to say. I, I really, I flipped through it a little bit to kind of familiarize myself with it before I bought it, and so it looks good. I'm looking forward to that one. And now for the free things. Um, my daughter Jenna has a degree in creative writing, and so a lot of the books she had to have for her coursework were uh, just literary fiction books, a lot of stuff. She did some children's literature, some other things. So she has Fledgling by Octavia Butler. And I don't know very much about Octavia Butler, and I don't know if I want to know very much. She's kind of a, an interesting sci-fi writer that I'm not sure that I would like what she writes based on the things that I've heard about the plot lines. But I don't know. Um, you know, Jenna just was going to pass this along and have me, you know, give it to the, um, get rid of it somehow. So I thought, well, you know, maybe it's worth giving it a look. So now I have it. It was free. <laughs> so maybe I'll give that a try. She also had this book called Reading Children's Literature. It's by Carrie Hintz and Eric Tribunella, and it's, it's a textbook. But I thought it had some interesting, um, 
things in it about how to read children's literature. And since I read so much YA, I thought maybe it might have a little bit of, um, I don't know, direction maybe in terms of looking at uh, ways to critique children's literature. So anyway, that's why I kept it. I don't know. I'll probably flip through it here and there. It's got pretty pictures in it. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm probably going to pass that right on along, but you never know. And lastly, uh, Picture This, How Pictures Work by Molly Bang. Uh, this is another textbook that they had to have. And I think this was uh, Michaela's, or no, it's probably Jenna's. It's all about art. And uh, it just looked really good. There is something about the way these lines and shapes um, are made that bring out a memory, a very early memory for me of watching television. Uh, I think it was the Ed Sullivan show. I was very, very young. And I don't know why that, I don't know what that memory is about. It's not fully fleshed out. And so anyway, this just makes me think of it. And I thought, ooh, that's kind of a cool book. So I wanted to keep it. And that is my book haul. We're almost at the end of February. So it is not likely that I will have many more books to show you uh, before the end of February and into March. So I'll, I'll wait till March to let you know if I buy any more. But if you've read any of these, let me know. I've read several of them, but I've also not read several of them. So let me know what you think and uh, point me to the right ones that are going to be amazing. I always love it when you do that and I trust your opinions implicitly. I really do. So that's it for now for me and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.